Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Alex Dixon. I'm a senior sociology major here at Boston University. I work at the Welcome Center and me as well as my colleagues are going to give you a little tour of campus today. Hey y'all, my name is Allie. I'm a senior psychology major. I also work at the Welcome Center and I'm super excited to show you around campus today. First stop, Lucina Hall, home to the Office of Admissions, the Office of Financial Aid and Scholarship, our Career Center and Counseling Center. This is a one-stop shop for a lot of needs on campus. This building was originally a residence hall and it's named after the Ball Brothers sister, Lucina. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with anybody in the Office of Admissions or Financial Aid if you're interested, which I would highly recommend if you're a prospective student. Um, also in here in the Career Center, you can get connected with over 5,000 on-campus jobs. You can go and work for our office and be a tour guide, um, as well as internships and other full-time job opportunities after you graduate. Um, and then the Counseling Center, you can have free counseling sessions. They also have a really fun relaxation room in there. If you're having a stressful week, go hop in there. This fine statue behind me, her name is Beneficence. Now she is sort of the symbol and the icon here at Ball State. Her right arm's reaching out, sort of a come with me gesture for the community. Her left hand has that treasure chest and in that treasure chest is the wealth, knowledge and experience that you can get here at Ball State University. And those wings, well, she may look like an angel, but those wings actually represent the idea of being able to take flight, taking that education, that knowledge and experience from Ball State to the greater outside world. Between you and me, there are some myths and rumors that surround Beneficence. The first one, those five pillars that are behind her, those represent the five founding Ball Brothers of Ball State. Now, on top of those pillars, look like there's some urns. And the myth is, the ashes of the Ball Brothers are in those urns. It's a little morbid for me. So here's another myth. If you take a significant other, and you and your significant other come before Beneficence around midnight and smooch, and her wings flap, that means it's true love. The quad! Right now, we are standing in the beautiful quad. It's one of the largest green spaces on campus. This quad is surrounded by academic buildings. Right down there, that's our Cooper Science Building. Big red brick building. It's being replaced by a new foundational sciences building right down the street. Right over here, that's our David Owsley Museum of Art, commonly referred to as DOMA. It is our free art museum full of thousands of artifacts and pieces of art from around the world. Back behind me here, that is the yellow brick building on campus, the only yellow brick building on campus. It's our administration building. That's where the office of the president is, a lot of vice presidents, provost, and it's the original building of Ball State's campus back in the early 1900s when it was built. Behind me is the Burkhart building, where the office of the anthropology department and history department are located. If you're taking any social science classes like sociology, anthropology, and history like I just mentioned, maybe psychology, you likely are gonna have classes in the Burkhart building. Oh, and foreign language too. Behind me is our North Quad, a building that I practically live in because I take all of my major classes here. So this building houses the College of Science and Humanities. It also has the Learning Center. So if you need any help with tutoring, you can actually get a tutor from um, current Ball State students in any class that you need. And then there's also freshman advising. So they're there to help you register for classes and get you set up for your um, four years here. Something else that I think is really fun about North Quad, it actually used to be a library, so it's actually really confusing. And a lot of the staircases don't even connect on multiple floors. So I like to say um, North Quad is kind of like those moving staircases in Harry Potter because it's so difficult to navigate that building. Behind me through these trees is the Student Center. So this houses the Office of Student Life, which oversees the over 400 student organizations that you can be a part of on campus. My biggest piece of advice as an incoming freshman is to get involved right away. Now, it also houses the Student Center Tally. Um, in there, we have Starbucks. You can grab some coffee with a friend, or you can grab a bite to eat at Taco Bell or get some home-style food, sit, work on homework, and hang out. Now, every Saturday night, traditionally, there'd be an event at the Student Center called Late Night, which would run from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. There'd be free food, games, activities, prizes, giveaways. It's completely free for students to go. And it's a lot of fun. Welcome to the Scramble Light. This is the busiest spot on campus. Here, all four sides of traffic stop. You'll hear chirping and a 30 second countdown. You can cross any which way you like. We have a lot of organizations that will stand here, hand out flyers, hand you cookies, give you coffee, all sorts of stuff. Let's go. Welcome to the Teachers College. This is the tallest building on campus, so you cannot miss it. Fun fact, before Ball State was Ball State University, we were actually a teacher's college. So this is something we are nationally recognized for. Hi, behind me now is Emmons Auditorium, the professional performance venue of Ball State University. Now, traditionally, we would host a 
wide range of different professional performances here, from traveling Broadway shows to different musical performances. Heck, long ago we even had Macklemore and Ryan Lewis here, and Jesse McCartney, if you can remember him. But I like to go to the sound of music and things like that. Back behind me here is Sursa Performance Hall. Now, on contrary to Emmons, which is a professional performance venue, Sursa is actually used by students in the music department. So if you're in a symphony, band, or orchestra in a student group, you're likely going to be performing at Sursa. Behind me, this White House is our Ball Honors House, home to the Honors College. I myself am an honors student and I've loved being a part of the Honors College throughout my four years here. So the honors classes are very unique compared to normal classes that I've taken. They're very heavily discussion based and they go deep into topics in philosophy, the humanities, history, all sorts of things that I wouldn't have had the experience to learn about had I not been a part of the Honors College. It's a really unique opportunity and I would highly recommend it if you're interested. Wow, isn't that pretty? That's our brand new health profession building. If you're studying something in here related to the medical field, likely you're gonna have a class or at least a lab in that building. Wow, that's a big pile of dirt back there, but eventually it'll be a green space with an outdoor amphitheater. Behind me, right in the heart of campus, we're building our brand new multicultural center. This is home to our big four, the four multicultural organizations on campus. Here we've got our university theater where our students will put on various shows throughout the year. Don't worry, you don't have to be a theater major to audition. All majors are welcome. Behind me over here is Pruce Hall. That's Pruce Lake Juice for you guys. Now, you can have a different class in there, such as your comm classes, financial aid, but every Friday they host a free movie called Friday Night Filmworks for movies that are out of theaters, but not yet to Netflix or Hulu. And lastly in this area, we have Bracken Library, one of my favorite spots on campus. This is a four-story library with all different study spaces. There's also a Bookmark Cafe in here, which is one of my favorite spots to eat. This is Bookmark Cafe. I like to grab a coffee, go hang out, and study with some of my friends. Now, college comes with a lot of study groups. Let's say you need to meet your study group at Bracken Library, where we are right now. Behind me is Fourth Idol, which she's commonly referred to as the Naked Lady. I'm sure you can see why. This is the Whisper Wall. When you whisper here, someone else all the way across the way can hear you. What's going on, guys? Right over here, this is the Widinger Business Building, home of the Miller College of Business. Wow, this is the Top Tally Center for capital markets and investing. It's a great spot to stop and tie your shoe. All right, this is Frog Baby. Now, Frog Baby was originally housed in our David Owsley Museum of Art in the Quad. And we had a tradition with her where students would rub her nose for good luck on exams. Now, it turns out we needed a little too much luck. We probably should have just been studying because we ended up rubbing Frog Baby's nose right off. So we sent her away. She's gotten a nose job since, and now she's relocated to this fountain. We have a new tradition where we like to dress Frog Baby up for events around campus. Beautiful. Would you believe me if I told you that this is the tallest collegiate bell tower in the state of Indiana? Well, it's true. And there's also 48 bells in there. You can hear them ring every 15 minutes. Behind me is CAP, or the College of Architecture and Planning. This building looks like an architect's desk, as you can see with its slanted roof. Right. Wow, the rec center, huh? What a place. Who would have thought? Not me. Certainly not me. This is our Joe Gora Recreation and Wellness Center. Behind me, we have one of the best parts about this facility, which is our 35-foot rock climbing wall. The Office of Outdoor Pursuits is the one that handles all appointments for this, but it's actually free for all Ball State students to use this facility. On top of this, this is a 400,000 square foot facility with three levels of fitness space and many different things that you can do in here. Now, while the rec is free for all students to use, you can actually sign up for rec fit classes, which take place in rooms like this. Offerings include things like Zumba, cycling, yoga, all sorts of stuff. Oh! All day, I've been making them all day. Now, traditionally, this whole basketball court is filled up with tables from over our 400 student organizations here at our activity fair every fall. All day, all day. Hey, Alex. Hey, 
What's that? Oh, that's for the arena. That's where our men and women's basketball, men and women's volleyball, and our gymnastics all compete. Oh, cool. Yeah, and going to athletic events is free for students, completely free. OMG. Yeah. Check out a game! And they were roommates. Speaking of roommates, let's talk about residence halls. Just like this. Brand new North Hall on the north side of campus. Now most of our residence halls are broken up into living learning communities. Our living learning communities are broken up into different residence halls based on major. And this goal is so that students living in these residence halls will most likely be taking similar classes, can study together, and each residence hall is packed with an academic peer mentor, which can help any student with their learning needs. <laughs> You can grab a bite to eat at our brand new North Dining Hall. This is the newest dining hall on campus. Now, for your dining, there's all sorts of different plans that you can get. And campus has a really good mix of chains and home style food. So, right behind me is the Robert Bell Building, which is the home of the Mathematics, English, and Computer Science Departments. And the cool thing about the Robert Bell Building is that it connects to the Letterman Building, which then connects to the Ball Communication Building, which then connects to the Arts and Journalism Building. So, what you can find in the Letterman Building is that our telecommunications and communications classes, ball communications, an extension of the communications and telecommunications programs, but it's a lot of faculty and office space. And then in the arts and journalism building, we'll get to there when we get there. This is the last stop on our tour today. So we just walked through all four of those buildings ending right here in the arts and journalism building. Behind me, we have our bookstore where you can get all of your books for your college classes, or you can pick up some Ball State merchandise. And in front of me, we have our atrium, which is one of our most popular dining facilities on campus. Hey. Thanks for joining us today. Hope to see you on campus sometime soon. Chirp, chirp. chirp.